everyone, Will Brink here, BrinkZone.com. Uh, I think today will be a, a f really fun video for people that uh, want to go down uh, memory lane um, when bodybuilding really was at its peak as far as uh, popularity, uh, as far as you know the magazines were concerned and how the industry just, where the industry was at as far as being sort of uh, really a lot of fun and uh, just a, a good time all around. Um, now, if, if you weren't reading magazines, if you weren't around at that time, 90s, I think you'll still enjoy this video, just sort of uh, seeing what things were like back in the day, you know. Um, when people ask me um, if they don't remember who I am or whatever from those times, they don't say, you know, what, what magazines did you write for? My response usually is all of them, because I, I did write for pretty much all of the major magazines of the time. You know, Muscle Mag and Muscular Development and Iron Man and uh, Muscle Media and um, what, what else? Well, basically all the rest of them. The only, the only major magazine of the time that I was not published in was Flex. Uh, and exactly why that is, I don't remember. I, I don't know if I just, just never um, uh, submitted anything or I, I do know that the, the Weeder publications at that time and maybe Flex especially were all in-house writers. Uh, maybe they didn't, I just don't remember. But anyway, that's the only major magazine I didn't write for. Um, the one that I wrote the most for was uh, Muscle Mag International. That was where I started um, and I really had the best, best relationship with them. So as far as like, uh, I don't know, I would say 70% or something in that ballpark of what I wrote was uh, in Muscle Mag International. So what I want to do now, uh, when I moved, I'm going to put up a video for my magazine collection. Anyway, it's just magazines I'm going through, and I got many, many more, and I am uh, uh, in every single one of those uh, magazines in one form or another. Crazy memories. Yeah. 1997. Briefly of a video I made, but um, when I moved from New England to uh, Florida, uh, I, I went down to my basement. I realized I had boxes and boxes of magazines, that uh, all of which I was in. And, you know, uh, if you've ever moved a house, an entire house, especially from state to state, you know, your brain is just, wants to just, like, get rid of everything you can, you just don't want to bring. And uh, I decided I just didn't want to bring all those boxes. You know, in retrospect, you know, maybe I should have. So, but what I did do is uh, I, did, I did grab um, an example of, like, some of my favorites of the time, and I'm gonna, we're going to go take a look at some of those. And, you know, again, in retrospect, what I should have done was grabbed maybe an example from each magazine, uh, and I didn't. What I actually ended up doing was just grabbing a handful of, uh, of muscle mags, and I have some other ones I also grabbed, which, which are non-bodybuilding. But, um, yeah, I should have, I should have grabbed some, some muscle medias and some muscular developments and stuff. Um, but, again, I, I just was sort of trying to really narrow it down to sort of key articles, I guess, for me. Uh, that I think people will remember. So let's start with uh, 1991 was my first article in Muscle Mag International. Um, I, I don't know if I bet you guys will remember that. I, this was my first article. So Bob Paris basically uh, in this issue came out of the closet uh, with his boyfriend which you know wasn't like groundbreaking news for the time but it was big news. You know they made a big deal out of it that uh, you know he made the Bob Paris and they wrote a book together uh, they were on Oprah and so forth, and my first article, 1991, here it is. So, uh, let me see if I get this up for you. Sorry, I wasn't trying to. So this was my very first article. It's true, you can make constant gains and avoid burnout. That was my very first article, and I'm going to give you a funny story about how that ended up in there. Um, now, you have to remember, this was, at the time... The, all this article really was, was basically uh, trying to get people to back off a bit on the volume, like two days on, one day off, and then taking a break, you know, taking like a deload every eight to ten weeks. Now, by today's standards, that's like old news, totally not advanced stuff, but you have to understand 1991 and stuff, um, for the most part, you know, people trained like Arnold, six days a week, two-hour marathon workouts, and, and all that, and so the very idea of like, Maybe that's not best for everybody. Uh, maybe it's best to actually, you know, uh, take it. Uh, at the time, I was basically recommending 
two on one off um, type of thing and taking a, um, a deload like every 10 to 12 weeks. Like I said, I know by today's standard that doesn't sound too exciting, but it, it was well received. So how did that article get in there? How did I get my first article in? Um, I had a, at the time I had a private training business. I was actually one of the first, I think I was the first private trainer in World's Gym, Dedham, Massachusetts. Private trainers is certainly in the East Coast, Northeast were not that common uh, an idea. And um, I was doing a seminar and uh, somebody, I don't remember who it was, said, you know, you, you know, you seem to have a lot of knowledge made above that of your typical trainer and you know, you should, uh, you should like write for the magazines or something. And I went, okay, you know. Um, I was taking a break between school at the time. And I thought, you know, I mean, I read all the magazines. I was a voracious reader of those magazines. I had stacks, again, of all the magazines. So, I mean, I knew exactly what, what the tone was like and all that. And I really liked Muscle Mag. Muscle Mag was my favorite magazine. And, and I will tell you again, if you read those magazines, um, you know, hold on, let me get my microphone. Sorry, hopefully I wasn't too, uh, you could all hear me. I just realized my microphone wasn't very close. But, you know, all those magazines had their own tone and their own style, you know, and, and Muscle Mag was the most fun. Uh, like, like you might have gotten more science-based, um, serious information out of Muscle Media. Uh, you might have gotten more of the well-known, say, uh, uh, popular bodybuilders in, you know, um, uh, flex or whatever, because those those bodybuilders were under contract with Weeder and stuff. So all they all kind of had their own sort of flavor and style. But as far as like sheer entertainment and just fun, nobody beat Muscle Mag, and I just loved Muscle Mag. So that was I said, okay, I'm gonna write an article. I'm gonna I'm gonna send it to Muscle Mag, and I sent it. And uh, months went by, and I didn't hear anything from them. And I thought, okay, you know, whatever, it didn't happen. I'm not gonna get in there. And per my usual monthly uh, trip to the bookstore, because again, no internet, you always, you always knew when the magazines were coming out, and you went to the bookstore, which was a lot of fun, frankly, and uh, you went and saw what the latest magazines were, and I picked up that muscle mag, and I was, I was looking through it, and I, was, I stopped, and I was like, boy, that looks familiar, and then I read the title, and I saw my name, and I was like, holy shit, that's my article, and people like in this quiet bookstore all looked at me, and I was like, sorry, sorry. And I was like, you know, I was so excited. And I bought all the magazines they had right off the shelf. And uh, I went home and uh, I called, uh, found the number for Muscle Mag International in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. And I got a hold of somebody and uh, they were just like very casual. I said, oh, you know, we, uh, we lost your contact info and we figured you'd turn up, you know, and uh, we'd, we'd uh, pay you. And... Um, so, I mean, I just, to this day, I still think, imagine if for whatever reason I, I didn't see it or I didn't go to the store that day or something, and I would have missed my, my entire, like, opportunity. But they were nonplussed by that. And uh, they sent me my $300 check. And uh, so then I thought to myself, well, okay, I got one in. Maybe it's a fluke. You know, who knows? I'm going to write two more, and if I get three articles in a row in, you know, it's meant to be. And I did. So that's, that's how that all began. People have asked me, how did you get into uh, writing for the magazines? So without, I, the rest of the magazines I have aren't uh, really in any real order, but just some really, really fun magazines. Um, this one, I'm sure you remember, that's, now, I know if you read the magazine, you remember Amy Fadihi, because Amy, well, everybody remembers Amy Fadihi. She was just one of the most stunning women you'll ever see, and she was also just exceptionally photogenic and a really cool person. So the article I had in this one, I, I had several actually um, in this particular issue. This is, sorry, this is uh, 1996. I think 96 was a really good year for me. All right, so here, here's a good one. Hopefully you guys remember this one. Steroid delusions and other warnings. That was like, um, and unfortunately, well, several people in this, uh, in this article are not with us anymore. Um, I don't know, hopefully you remember people, but that was kind of like a, a sort of a rant series that I had. I think I did three of those, but that was me sort of just breaking down my my um, irritations of stuff, you know, uh, people calling, I don't know, uh, uh, creatine a steroid. You know, I, I covered a lot of stuff that, again, by today's standards, um, maybe like old news. Um, and also, I don't, hopefully you guys remember that I also had a column in Muscle Mag for over 10 years, which was called the the intake update column, and it was always in the back. Um, I don't know if, hopefully you guys remember that. Look at that, and look at that cheesy photo of me. 
Anyway, that was this was not the first one. I don't even remember when my first intake update column was in there, but uh, so an intake update column was basically mostly uh, Q and A, uh, me looking at studies and, and commenting on studies. Sometimes it was answering letters. You know, I got again there was no e email at this time. Uh, well, maybe there was, but it wasn't real common. But um, I had a PO box that was in Newton Center, Massachusetts, and um, you know every couple of days I'd go answer it. And and uh, actually, I still kept. Someday I'm going to do another video because what I did do, and I just couldn't get rid of all of them. I had stacks of letters that people had written me, handwritten letters that came to my PO box, um, and I had bags and bags of them. And and I threw out most of them, but one bag. I just couldn't bring myself to throw out all those letters. I did keep. And someday, what I'm going to do is maybe I'll do another video. If anyone's interested, uh, where I'll take out some of those letters. So the intake update was, you know, some of it was like a study that I would comment on. Sometimes it was, you know, letters I got. You know, it was just, it was random stuff, but it did really well. People seemed to like it. So next one up. Hopefully you remember this cover. This is uh, I'm hiding it. This is also '96. I think I'd like to say '96 was a good year for me. I had a lot of stuff, but I wrote articles every month, just at least every, at least almost every month from '91 on. So let's, this one I was really a popular one. I really like this one. This one was the skinny on fat loss. Now, this one, by again, today's standards, would not be, um, by today's standards, you know, this wouldn't have been a big deal. But so at the time, basically what I was arguing was that uh, bumping up, that protein was the least uh, likely macronutrient to be converted to body fat, which is still true. At the time, we didn't have a lot of data, but anecdotally, and I worked with a lot of people, uh, was the protein, if you were trying to lose fat, body fat, not weight, body fat, protein was, more protein was the way to go. It was the least likely macronutrient to convert to body fat hormonally, thermically, and so forth. And that has all been, as far as I'm concerned, that has all been proven uh, in the last few decades um, by the data, I think there should be more, but anyway, by and large, I was right. It was a very popular article, um, and hopefully you guys remember that one. Let me see. Anything else in here? Intake update column. Uh, is that my first one? No. Here is another one. Oh, actually, I'm going to also, FYI, I'm, I'm definitely going to tag uh, people that are on these covers. Uh, sorry, like, um, oh, that's, that's, sorry, I'm going to go that. That's Frank Seppi. I know Frank. There's Monica. Um, I definitely, I'm sorry, her name is blank. Uh, I know her name. I'm sorry I'm blanking. I, I'm not Facebook friends with her, but you guys will remember. I, I'm just blanking on that one. Okay, here's another one. Uh, is this another 96? Which one is this? Yeah, yeah. Of course, Amy. That was Now, Amy, of course, was a very popular model, as you can see why. And uh, there's Craig, and I have a whole, I'll, I knew Craig. We all know what happened to Craig. He's sitting in prison uh, for the rest of his life for murder. Uh, I'll have a I have a I'll have a Craig uh, when I when I want to talk about that story I I have a Craig story, several Craig stories but I have one in particular. Uh, oh, so what did I say? Here I am talking about the cover. Okay, here, this was one of my again one of my breakthrough articles was a big deal at the time. Uh, I hope you guys remember this one. How to get ri ripped uh, by eating fat? Uh, yes, fat for fat loss. That was an article I wrote with my pal Dr. Udo Erasmus. Now, that article was, as far as I know, the first mainstream article that was written uh, about, like, essential fatty acids. That was the first, oh, I, I mentioned and recommended flax oil in that, in that article and recommended um, higher intakes of specific fats for fat loss, which was, again, uh, essential fatty acids. Um, but at the time, that was, like, a big deal. That article, which I've, I've mentioned this multiple times, uh, I sent that over to Muscle Media, and uh, and uh, it was refused by the editor, uh, who said I was nuts, and uh, you know the recommending eating more fat or certain types of fat to help lose fat for your health and so forth was was uh, crazy talk, and uh, he was interested. So, you know, TC, I'm giving you a hard time, but um, that's true. That that's actually what happened. So I, I you know I gave uh, Muscle Media right a first refusal, sent that over to uh, to Muscle Mag, and. The rest is history. But that was uh, that was a big deal at the time. Um, you know, a lot of people started using flax oil after that. Uh, you know, one one I worked with one uh, pro at the time, and um, he, he told people he was taking seven and eight tablespoons a day of flax oil right up to his show. That's a lot of flax oil. I didn't tell anybody to take that much flax oil, but uh, yeah, he was a big guy. But anyway, I was surprised that uh, 
you know, uh, that uh, typical bodybuilding, if, if, if a uh, tablespoon is good or whatever, you know, eight has got to be better, but that's what he took, uh, right up to his show. And he did very well. I don't remember if he won, but he was a top, he was a top level pro at the time. Um, where are we? Okay. This is issue 191. Of course, everybody knows Mike O'Hearn. I don't remember her name, but she was pretty popular. If anybody remembers her name, uh, let me know. Let, let me see what we had. I think this was another article in Muscle Mag. Ah, so this, I think this was my most important article. You may have another opinion. I don't know. But this, to me, was the most important article I ever did. And this was, what's in your creatine? Um, you know, that article changed the entire industry. Uh, and to this day, still has effects on the industry. At the time, and even unfortunately today, but at the time specifically, you know, everybody's opinion was, you know, creatine is creatine. It's all the same stuff. Get the cheapest creatine. And um, I knew that wasn't true because I had, you know, been involved in creatine even then and talking to researchers and uh, uh, did some con some consulting work and stuff. And so I took a bunch of creatine products off the shelf. Uh, I labeled them. We had them tested. Uh, and they came back very different as to quality and um, uh, purity and contaminants and so forth. Um, if you want to read that article, uh, that's you can find that on um, – I'll, actually, I'll try to post it below the vid. It's on uh, Brinkzone.com. And there was also a part two, which I did. And part two, uh, they got – the magazine got so much heat over that article from manufacturers and stuff that they wouldn't take part two. So part two was actually uh, only published on the web, which at the time, we're talking uh, like 96, 97. So at that time, now the, the internet was actually a thing, and I had a website, and other people had websites, uh, and now there was an alternative place to, to put content, which is obviously what killed the magazines. But uh, part, they wouldn't take part two because they just got too much heat uh, <laughs> and pushback and kickback from the industry. Um, here's an industry study. So I put that article out. I was asked to speak at the GNC convention, which was a pretty good-sized convention back then because GNC was kind of the, the number one player. And uh, I'm at an after party, and this, I forget the guy's name, but he got, he was drunk, and uh, he bitched me out, said I cost him, because that's all he sold was like uh, super cheap, bulk, cheap-ass uh, Chinese creatine. And he started to yell at me, or not yell at me, but basically told me an asshole and and uh, took a swing at me, and he was drunk, and uh, said I cost him a ton of money, and blah, blah, blah. He was a little short, uh, and I'm not that tall. He was even shorter than I, a little fat guy with, like, curly black hair. Maybe somebody, I mean, he was pretty well known in the industry at the time. I don't remember what his name was, but uh, that's my, there's my industry story. All right, moving on. Uh, here we go. You guys all obviously know Gerard. Gerard. Um, what is that? I don't know what. Issue 162. Um that's 95, so we're going back. Actually, we're going, I didn't put these in, in uh, chronological order. Ah, okay, so this, this is my, that's my very first intake update column. So there you go, 95. Look at, look how nerdy I am. Look at my, look at my uh, cheesy glasses. So that was my very first, um, yeah, and look, look at the, look at the, these guys were like the big stars at the time, of course. You recognize these guys as Gary Stridham. Anyway, so that was my very first uh, intake update column. I was really excited about that. Then they offered me a column like that. And um, that went, like I said, it went, I think, about 10 years. Ah, well, now, of course, another very popular lady, Trish Stratus, because she was just ridiculously photogenic. And, of course, she went on to be really well-known in the wrestling world, but a lot of people in, who follow wrestling don't know Trish Stratus was from Canada and got her start in uh, Muscle Mag International as a cover model because uh, uh, Bob Kennedy discovered her, I believe. Uh, I'm not going to say where, as it's a only rumor. Anyway, uh, so, and this was, uh, I don't know why I picked to choose to keep this. I should have kept way more of these. Anyway, this was another one of my uh, uh, rant-type articles where I just covered, like, different studies. Uh, this was with Andro at the time. This must be a later one. What is this? No, it's still 90, no, 98, 1998. So this is, like, things like Andro and, pre, you know, uh, Andro and all stuff started to become a thing um, and so forth. So it was just kind of one of my rant articles. So that's, I think that's it for Muscle Mag International, the ones that I grabbed. Uh, just I'll go through a couple of quickies. That was one of my articles. I, I've also written for non-bodybuilding magazine, Life Extension. I had a, I had a bunch of articles in there. Uh, I was featured in uh, Special Operations, uh, SOTEC once. 
Uh, I've been in a, I've been in various uh, law enforcement related magazines. I don't know why I took those. Uh, back to bot, bot, bodybuilding, but anyway, fitness. Uh, I was also in the very first Oxygen, so a lot of you fitness models and stuff should should recognize that. Um, what was her name? Of course, I'm going to blank. Really, really nice. She didn't stay. She was pretty popular. She didn't stay in the um, Marla Duncan. Was that Marla Duncan? I think so. Oh, no, Vicky Pratt. That's Vicky Pratt. That's who that is. Anyway, Vicky Pratt, really, really nice girl. But she, at whatever reason, dropped out uh, of the industry. Uh, this one, you know, my, my articles were published in various languages in various countries all around the world. And somebody sent me this one. This was from, um, I think this was Korea. And I didn't know for years and years. I thought it was Japanese because I just know the difference. And um, I don't know if I, I, if I can find it quickly, but my, I think it was one of my uh, one of my intake updates was in here regularly. And I think this was the sort of the uh, South Korean um, equivalent. I don't know if this magazine even still exists, frankly. Anyway, yeah, I guess that's it. So there's there's our uh, trip down memory road. If you remember those, I hope you do. If you have any questions about uh, what it was like to um, write in those magazines or anything. Um, oh, sorry, I'm going to move this out of the way. Sorry, okay. Um, and, you know, again, in retrospect, all those boxes, what I should have done was pulled some at least more examples of different magazines versus and full of muscle mags, but muscle mag, like I say, was kind of my was kind of my home base, and uh, I think I think you'll all agree if you read the magazines that, as far as sheer fun, nothing beat muscle mag. As far as you know, uh, accurate information, you know, I think uh, I, I I was probably their lead. I was probably their lead science based you know person who uh, kind of grounded them in that in that department. I think that's why they liked me and why they uh, kept me on because they didn't pay very well. So if you like that, uh, sub up on this channel, like. Obviously, this is brought to you by uh, um, Alpha Joe. Tastes good. Feels good. It's good for you. And uh, I'll leave some information on that below. And I'll see you all on the brink side.